All right, good evening, everybody. Sorry for the delay in getting started. We had to get everybody in. I think everybody's in. Michael Davis, Director of Schools. I think I know a lot of you, and we welcome you here tonight. You are part of a unique group. You're, some of you are, uh, this, this uh, building that you're in today has been completely remodeled, so y'all are just, I was thinking about that when y'all were sitting in here. This is the first group that's kind of been in this new uh, auditorium that's been remodeled, so I just want to share that with you. Um, we are uh, obviously in uncharted water in our school system with uh, dealing with this pandemic and trying to uh, do what's best for our kids and offer parents an option uh, because we know that you know what's best for your kids and moving forward. Um, so at this point, we have, we have started school this week, as you well know. Seniors, eighth graders, and fifth graders started Monday. And I had, we had day two today. So I appreciate the high school, and I'm gonna introduce the new principal here in just a second to you. What I want you to know about the distance learning option as far as where we're headed with this. This is all new to us. It'll be new to you and your students. And I think what I put out there, and I have been, uh, the calls that I have gotten, which has been a whole, whole lot of calls, is that we've got to all work together on this. This is gonna be all new. It's going to be a, a, an effort that we've got to cooperate and have patience. Um, certainly understand that once your child starts this distance learning, it'll be for a minimum of a semester. And then if things uh, change that you want your child to come back to school in January, uh, there'll be a window of an opportunity uh, this fall that you'll be able to declare that. And then we would start second semester January the 5th. And then you can make that choice during that uh, window of opportunity this fall. And if you want to continue with the distance learning in the spring semester from January to May, you can certainly do that as well. That'll be your choice. So I know there'll be a lot of questions. I appreciate what the high school has done. I think they've got a good plan in place to, uh, to do this. But again, um, please have patience, work with your teachers. Let's try to make this work because the bottom line is we want what's best for your child just like you do, so, okay? Mike, welcome, if you will, the new principal of the Hardin County High School, Mr. Wes Wilkerson. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Um, like Mr. Davis said, uh, this is all new. This is something that our teachers are going through for the first time. Our students are going through for the first time. We as administrators are going through for the first time. Our hope is, for it to get better and better, day by day, week by week, month by month, semester to semester. We, our ultimate goal is to offer your student an education in a distance learning platform that's the same as they get here at the high school. Now, I will tell you, there will be some bumps in the road. There will be some things that we have not figured out that we don't have all the answers to, but I can promise you that we're gonna work with you we're going to be understanding, and we want to have an open line of communication between the parents, the students, our faculty and staff. Um, we've appointed Ms. Carol Miller. Uh, Ms. Carol, will you stand up for just a minute? For those of you who are doing distance learning, who are not able to um, access the internet, that you will need to do it through packets. She will be your point of contact here at the high school for pick up and drop off for those packets. And we will, we'll explain a little more about it later, but her name is Miss Carol Miller. Her email address, if you're using packets, is carol.miller at hctnschools.com where Coach Jean has uh, put it up on the projector. So if you can't pick up your packet when we have the, the designated date, and we're gonna go over that as well, or if you can't bring it back by that certain date, we ask you to get in touch with that teacher. Also copy Ms. Miller on that email because she will be the point of contact. So as we go through this, we hope again to get better and better every day and to get better and better every step of the way. Now, there will be some time for you to decide midway through the semester 
we will probably put it out again for you to decide for your spring semester. So around fall break time, if you think, man, this semester's been tough, when it gets over with, I want to go back to school. That will, you will be able to do that in January. Again, if you choose the spring semester to stay home, that will be a semester decision. So just take time while you're working through this, while you're going through it, hopefully by then, we will have more direction from the government. Maybe, maybe there's a vaccine by then, but if not, if we're in the same situation, um, there will be a chance to come back for you to reevaluate your decision. Now, the way we're gonna measure attendance through our distance learning, because your student is responsible for, for completing their coursework, for being um, active in the classroom with their coursework six and a half hours a day, the best way for us to, to progress monitor that is by the academic work that they're turning back into us. If your student is completing the same work that the students are in class, if they're in a Google Classroom online, or if they're doing packets, if, if the work that they're completing is the same, that's how we're gonna measure their attendance through their academic progress. We have the same expectations for our students who are virtual, for our students who are completing it through packets, as we do for our students who are in the classroom. And some of you may know a few of these teachers down here that have shown up. You may know their expectations are high. And we have high expectations for you as a distance learner. The distance learner was created to provide you a safe environment from eight to three for you to complete your coursework. The distance learning was not created for you to work from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. and do your coursework at night when you have time. That's not what this was created for. And that's not what we expect each student to be doing all day. Um, we, we, we did have someone show up wanting to know if we could sign off on them working day shift and night shift all day. And the answer is no, because at some point during the day, they're gonna to need to do their classwork. So that's, this was created to provide them a safe learning environment at home and get the same thing that they need as they would get here. I mentioned this earlier, this is a partnership between our parents, our faculty, our staff, and your student. And that open line of communication is gonna be vital to their success. If they're having trouble, if, if, they, if somebody does get sick, if um, you have to make arrangements, because we know things come up from time to time for pickup drop off, the open line of communication is gonna be the key to distance learning. Contacting your teacher, logging in, make sure you're getting your work done. If, if, if things need to be adjusted, we can adjust as long as we know in advance. Ms. Carol Miller, she will be set aside every morning to check emails, to, to be ready to receive work in, to make appointments, to be calling from students we've not had contact with. So it's vital for you to have a good number on file with us, for you to check the email address that, that is gonna be provided, and for you to stay in contact with us. The communication will be key. We realize things come up from time to time. We're gonna be very understanding and work with you, but two days go by, three days go by, four days go by, it only takes a few minutes to, to shoot an email, to make a phone call. Hey, this came up, we need this, and we're gonna work with you, we promise. But at the same time, you've gotta work with us, and we've gotta make this thing the best we can make it, because as Mr. Davis said, earlier, we're all in this to give your student the best chance for academic success that is possible. Mr. Ben Jean is fixing to go over a few things on the PowerPoint, but before he does that, I'd like to, to, to go over one more thing, and that's the student handbook. Uh, we're not gonna go over it and read everything that's in it, but when your student 
has to come to school for end of course test or whatever the, the case may be, everything that's in the student handbook is going to apply dress code, if they have their cell phone out, those things are going to apply when we need them to come to campus. So most students, junior, seniors, know our cell phone policy. If it's out without the teacher's permission, we're going to take it up for three days. Second time, five days, seven days, 15 days, alternative school. Now, they're only going to have to come to campus to, to take tests. So when they're here on campus, the safest thing is to leave that cell phone in the car, at home, that way they're not tempted to get it out. Dress code, we want to make sure they're following the same dress code that our students that are here on campus are following. We've also got um, other policies and procedures, and we are going to get everybody a handbook to, to take on, to read at your, your leisure. Now, there are some things that we do need to cover, and I'm gonna read it real quick. So discrimination and sexual harassment, ethnic, religious, students shall be provided a learning environment free from sexual, racial, ethnic, and religious discrimination and harassment. It shall be a violation of the policy. Any employee or student discriminated against harass a student through a disparaging conduct, communication that is sexual, racial, ethnic, or religious in nature. The following guidelines are set forth from discrimination and harassment. Student discrimination and harassment will not be tolerated Discrimination and harassment is defined as conduct, advances, gestures, or words, either written or spoken, of sexual, racial, ethnic, or religious nature, which, number one, unreasonably interfere with the student's work or education opportunities, create an intimidating, hostile environment, imply submission to such conduct as made explicit or implicit in the term of receiving grades or credit, and imply that submission or rejection of such conduct will be on the basis for determination of the student's grade, or participation in a student activity. The alleged victim of, of the above referred offenses shall report these incidents immediately to a teacher, counselor, or building administrator. Any allegation shall be fully investigated by a complaint manager as set forth in student concerned complaints. The privacy and anonymity of all parties' witnesses to complaints will be respected, however, because the individual's need for confidentiality balance with the obligation to cooperate with police investigations or legal proceedings to provide due process of the accused to conduct a thorough investigation to take necessary action to resolve a complaint, identify the party's witness may be disclosed to appropriate circumstances to individuals that need to know. A substantial charge against an employee shall result in disciplinary action up to and including termination. Substantiated charge against a student may result in corrective or disciplinary action up to and including suspension. There will be no retaliation against any person who reports harassment or parties in an investigation. An employee that is disciplined for the violation of the policy may appeal the decision by contacting federal rights coordinator district or the district of schools. Any student disciplined for the violation policy may appeal in accordance with the disciplinary procedures. Hardin County High School system affirms that it will comply with the title 11, title 6, my Roman numerals are off. Title VI of the Civil Rights Act 1964, Title VI states, no person in the United States shall on the grounds of race, color, sex, national origin be excluded from participation in or denied benefits of or be subject to discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Anyone who believes the school system has discriminated against them or any other individual may file a complaint. The complaint form is located in each principal's office Written complaint should be filed within 180 days of the allegation discrimination by the complainant. They will handle the uh, they will be handled in 90 days of receipt. The completed form can be sent to Teresa McCormick, Title VI Coordinator, Title IX Coordinator, Mr. Ryan Miller, 155 Gwent Street, Savannah, Tennessee, 38372, Ryan.miller at hctnschools.com. If the complaint has not been resolved to your satisfaction, you can forward the complaint. To Leslie Farmer, Director of Office of Civil Rights, 
uh, Tennessee Department of Education, Sixth Floor, Andrew Jackson Tower, James Robertson Parkway, Nashville, Tennessee. Now, while I'm talking about Mr. Miller, I want to go ahead and introduce him. He is here, he is the truancy coordinator, and he will be talking to you a, a little bit more in depth about our policy that we are putting in place for truancy for students who are distance learning. So at this time, uh, Mr. Ryan Miller. Good evening. I see some familiar faces in here, and uh, I, I want to reiterate that this year is going to be a challenge. You know that. It, it's, uh, it's certainly been a challenge for us at the central office, as you can imagine. Uh, but it's been a challenge for all these young people as well and as you, for you as parents. So um, we want to do everything we can to help and to collaborate and to communicate. I want to say that first and foremost. I want this to be as positive as a year as it, it, it can possibly be. A um, few things. I'm sorry for looking at my phone, but I have a document on here that I'm looking at. Um, Mr. Wilkerson has done a very thorough job. I'm not going to restate everything. The key is going to be if you are a distance, well, if you are a, if you are a, uh, if you have a computer, what am I trying to say? If you, if you're on the internet, have the internet and can access Google Classroom, obviously if you're locked, if your student is logging in, completing their work, there's not going to be a problem with attendance, right? They're doing what they're supposed to do. Those that, um, that don't have the internet, that are completing packets, it's going to be very important for you as well to uh, collaborate, communicate with, uh, whether it be Miss Carol Miller, who will be um, dealing, she will be handling passing packets out and, and receiving those. It's gonna be very important that you communicate with her and communicate with um, the, your student's teacher. You know, the thing that we have to make sure of is that the students are doing what they're supposed to do. Obviously, it may look different for some. Mr. Wilkerson's already talk, talked about that. Let's see. We will, truancy will still be, well, let, me, let me talk about this first. Let's talk about what an excused versus an unexcused absence consists of. The policy you can look at on Hardin County Schools website is 6.2002. It's also, this policy is in the handbook and it discusses what is an excused versus an unexcused absence. That still applies, okay? Of course, what, what, what is an absence? Well, a day of, or two of not doing schoolwork could be an absence if we don't have a call in or a doctor's note. Obviously, it's a different situation, okay? Whereas a student might not, might not be able to do their work because uh, a parent can't be there to help them on Wednesday and then they make that work up on Saturday. That may happen some, and that's okay. We will be keeping their attendance in our internal tracking system, which is uh, Synergy. That's our student information system. Many of you have parent view. That's the system we use uh, to keep up with attendance. Let's talk just a minute about truancy. And first of all, I wanna say that I wanna do everything I can to help you uh, and, and, and if you'll communicate, I think that's the key. So let's talk about let's talk about specifically packet learners, because we we can't we're not laying our eyes on your student every day, and also they're not logging into a computer. So if, for instance, the, the quickest way to get into truancy trouble would be you pick up your packet on a Monday. You don't bring it back by the following Monday. Teachers are reaching out. They can't get a hold of you. Miss Miller may be reaching out. She can't get a hold of you. The administration may be reaching out. They can't get a hold of you. The counselor, whoever it may be, by that following Friday, which would be Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, that we're going to have to say you've at least missed five unexcused days. If there's no doctor's note or if there's no call-ins and there's been no uh, communication. Really, it's like more like 10, but we're gonna consider it five. At that point, that would start the truancy process, and instead of having face-to-face -face meetings, we will more than likely do those over the phone. Um, I, I can't stress enough, 
Well, first of all, it's different than having an elementary student. You know, you guys, you've got grown kids. There's seniors in here. They can play a part in this as well. I mean, they can call that teacher say, I'm doing work today. Um, the parent can call. Uh, whoever, you know, this is it's going to be different up here than, say, at the elementary school. But, but the main thing is this. I do not want to have to call anybody and say, well, your student's truant this year. We've got enough going on, right? We've, been th we've all been through enough. But it is very important that your child do something in school every day. Uh, it's, 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 it's so imp important for their future success because I know you want your children to be successful, as I do mine. And this can't just be, well, this is going to be easy. I think some of you are going to find out this is not going to be easy. You know, I can't imagine. I mean, I, I admire you for doing it. I can't imagine trying to help my daughter with geometry this year. Can't imagine. And I may have to. Let's say she gets sent home for uh, being quarantined or something. I may have to. But I sure don't want to. So it's going to be a challenge. And, and like Mr. Wilkerson said, we need your, uh, we need your cooperation. Does anybody have any questions for me? I kind of went through that as fast as I could. It jumped around a little bit, and I apologize. I, I didn't have it scripted out. Does anyone have any questions? Clear as mud? All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. And again, like he said, um, our plan is to pick up drop off on Monday from eight to 11. Now, let's say that, for instance, Mr. Miller, that's the only time that, that he can't do it. Then he calls and says, can I drop mine off on Tuesday at 9.45? I'll, I'll be in town. That call would be scheduled with Ms. Carol Miller. Ms. Carol Miller would have it written down. Ryan Miller, drop it off. Maggie Miller's work, 9.45 Tuesday. So that day goes by and, and he brings it. It's, it's, everything's fine. They don't bring it, then she's going to reach out to him that day. She's going to reach out to him on Wednesday. She's going to keep reaching out and trying to keep getting in touch until we hear something back and, and we get some work back because the work is going to be how we measure their academic progress. So if, if your student is doing it through packets, it's imperative that we get work picked up and dropped off. Um, if, if, if you have reliable internet and you're going through Google Classroom, that Mr. Gene's fixed to go over this PowerPoint, and if there's any questions when it's over, we'll try our best to answer them, then that's, that's different. We can log in and see, okay, they did submit this assignment back. So at this time, before I go in over into his uh, agenda, I'm gonna let Mr. Ben Gene come up and, and talk to you and present the PowerPoint. I've got the agenda and the order of, of things that I've got up here on the screen and uh, we've already jumped into part of that but we'll just move right through it. The first thing on the agenda is Jostens has been here yesterday and today presenting information to seniors about ordering graduation materials and caps and gowns and graduation invitations. Yes. Time to already start thinking about that. They were here today talking to juniors about class rings and those types of information. So we want to make sure you get that information. You should have gotten those packets as you came in the door if you were, some of you were at school yesterday or today and then here tonight. But you should have gotten those packets. It's got information about ordering class rings or ordering caps and gowns. And Mr. Brent Arvick from Jostens has left us just a quick video about graduation materials I'm going to show you. And then another quick video about class ring orders that I'm going to show you. And then he's going to go over some of the things. The other information that you need is in that packet. Hi, my name is Brent Arvick and I'm your local Johnson's representative. Jostens is the exclusive provider for your school's graduation supplies. I've had the privilege of working with Tennessee schools for the last seven years, helping parents and seniors prepare for and celebrate their graduation from high school. It is senior week at your high school, and it's time to order important graduation supplies. Let's start with the end in mind. Each student is required to wear a cap, gown, and tassel outfit at the graduation ceremony. 
You will also find custom graduation announcements or photo cards to send to your friends and family members, which will include information about the graduation ceremony and your party. A sample of the custom announcement will be included inside this pack. Finally, the senior gear. We offer a full line of Class of 2021 apparel that range from tassels, t-shirts, hoodies and sweatpants to the new senior Sherpa. There are three ways to place your senior's graduation order. Before choosing an option, please review the graduation order instructions form first. Option one, inside the packet you will find a legal size order form that you can turn in on order day. Please use the order instruction form to assist in filling out all sections of the order form. Option two, there's a color sheet of paper titled the mascot pack. The mascot pack tends to be our most popular package as it is easy and designed specifically for your school and includes a free cap, gown, and tassel along with many other items parents and students both want and need. Option three, you can order online at jostens.com. Listed on the front of this packet, you will find the date and time we will be at the school to take your senior's graduation form. Please include a $60 down payment, payment in full, or the JPay payment plan with the order form or mascot pack. With this payment, your senior will receive the 2021 apparel listed on the order instruction form. I look forward to helping you and your seniors celebrate an unbelievable senior year and graduation. If you have any questions, please call our local office or email me directly. Thank you. Uh, here's some information on the class rings and those orders. I will caution you whether it's with the class ring or whether it's with the uh, uh, graduation materials. If you're ordering online and you put in Hardin County High School, make sure that it is Hardin County High School, Savannah, Tennessee. There is a Hardin County High School in Elizabethton, Kentucky as well. So make sure you make sure you're in the right state and the right town if you're placing orders online. Hi, my name is Brent Arvick and I'm your local Jostens representative. Jostens is the exclusive provider for your school's class ring program. I've had the privilege of working with Tennessee schools for the last seven years, helping parents and juniors design and order their class rings to celebrate moments that matter and commemorate achievements throughout high school. It is class ring week at your high school and your student has earned the right to order theirs. This tradition dates back over 100 years. However, the styles and choices your student now has are in line with current trends and may look a little bit different than what you're accustomed to. This year, when your student orders a class ring, they will also receive a 2022 companion ring along with their choice of a custom Adidas backpack, custom performance hoodie, or a pair of wireless earbuds. Students will receive the class ring at a ring ceremony event with their classmates about two and a half months after the order. There are three ways to place your junior's class ring order. Option one, inside the packet, you will find the traditional paper order form that you can turn in on order day. If you can at least fill out the personal information section, we can help with the rest if there is any confusion. Option two is to go online to jostens.com and design the ring there. You will see the price and the exact look of the ring you design. Once designed, you can either print off your order form or confirmation number and bring it in on order day. Option three, you can order online at jostens.com. Listed on the front of this packet, you will find the date and time we will be at the school to take the class ring orders. We ask for a minimum $60 down payment to start production on the ring. If you would like, you can pay in full or choose the JPay payment plan in which your totals will be broken up into three equal monthly payments. With your down payment, your junior will receive the companion ring on order day and receive the gift or purchase item they choose at the ring ceremony later in the fall. I look forward to helping you and your students celebrate an unbelievable junior year. If you have any questions, please call our local office or email me directly. Thank you. All right, on the front of those packets, you will find the day or days that they will be here at Hardin County High School to place orders. Of course, you can place your order online. However, part of the time that they're gonna be here is during lunch blocks and you guys won't be here eating lunch with us. So, the time for those orders is next week on Tuesday, August 11th from three to 5 p.m. 
that will be set up in the cafeteria. You can come by and meet Mr. Arvick and place your order and ask any questions that you need to ask him at that time. Is, there also may be some contact information in that packet as far as emailing him or calling their office. Now, your responsibilities as a distance learner. You, well, we've referred to two different types of learners in here tonight. We've got, there's those of you who are going to be having a computer and internet and doing this at home. And then there are others who do not have a device or do not have internet and you're, you'll be having to pick up packets every week. So if you're working on your computer, we're going to be using Google Classroom and it is your responsibility to log in daily and check each of your classes for instruction that's been posted and for assignments that have been posted and knowing when those assignments are due. Every time an assignment's posted, there's a due date on it. It may be due by Tuesday at 3 o'clock. It may be due by Friday at 3 o'clock. It may be due by the end of the week, by Sunday night at 11.59 a.m. But you've got to pay attention to those due dates. It is your responsibility to not miss any deadlines. You've got to know when things are due. And again, I know a lot of you are thinking, I'm going to go to work from 6 o'clock to 5 o'clock every day and then try to do school work at night. If you've got a test due at 3 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon tomorrow and you're planning on being at work, you better do that test the night before so that you don't miss the deadline or the due date on any of those assignments. It's your responsibility to communicate with your teachers within Google Classroom. There are ways. You can send them messages. There's message boards you can post on to ask them questions. And they're going to get back with you. But it's your responsibility to communicate when you've got a question. And they're going to get back with you. And again, don't expect to go to work every day and put your schoolwork off till night and expect the teacher, if you've got a question about something and you email them at 7 o'clock that night or post a question, they're not going to get back with you that night. These teachers' work hours are from 8 to 3. They will get back with you the next day during their office hours. Their office hours will be their planning period. That's the time that they will be communicating with you. So if you expect them to communicate back with you, or if you're expecting a phone call from them, you better be available during that time that they are available. Well, again, when you contact a teacher, they'll answer you or try to contact you the next day or as soon as they can during their office hours. Mr. Miller and Mr. Wilkerson have already talked about absences. Going a full week without turning any work in basically adds up to five unexcused absences. Um, and that's a week where we haven't heard from you, haven't been able to get in touch with you. It, you know, if teachers are posting assignments every day and you go a couple of days and haven't turned anything in, they're going to reach out to you. They're going to try to contact you. And again, if you're one of these that's picking up packets and dropping them off, if you miss a drop off, we're going to reach out, try to contact you. But if we can't get a hold of you and you're not calling us back, then that's where the problems begin. If you change phone numbers or change Contact information, you've got to let us know here at the school so that we can get a hold of you in case something like that happens. For those without a device and internet, again, pick up of packets and drop off of packets will be on Mondays from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. out here in front of the auditorium. Ms. Miller will be set up to take work that you're dropping off and give you work that has been left for you to pick up. Now, again, we're going to work with you. Something comes up, and you can't get it here Monday, call. Let her know. Let her know, I'm not bringing it Monday, I'm going to bring it on Tuesday. We're going to work with you on that. Anytime you're scheduled to pick up a packet or drop off a packet on a Monday, 
A lot of holidays are on Mondays. Okay, I know especially in the spring, you get Martin Luther King Day on a Monday, you get President's Day on a Monday, those types of things. We may be out of school for weather on a Monday, but anytime school's not in session, pick up or drop off, drop off will be the very next day that school is in session. So let's just say we were out of school on this coming Monday, pick up would be on Tuesday. Or school's out for snow, in December, and we're, we missed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but we're back in school on Thursday, pickup would be on Thursday. The first day we're back in session. Again, point of contact for packet pickups and drop off will be Miss Carol Miller. We've given you her email address, carol.miller at hctnschools.com. You can call the high school here, 925 3976. And then dial extension 6168. That will take you to her phone or her voicemail if she does not answer and pick up. And she will be coordinating all pickup and drop off of materials. Now, meal distribution. You guys are still eligible to give food, meal pickups, and all of those things that, um, that we talk about. That registration can be found on the Facebook page of Hardin County Schools or go to the school system's website, www.hardincoschools.com and you can find that registration form and you need to fill that out. That has to be filled out every single week if you're gonna pick up meals. So if you're going to pick up meals next Monday, that form has to be filled out by Wednesday of the preceding week. So if you're going to want to pick up meals this coming Monday, that form has to be filled out by tomorrow. All right? The form is basically three questions. What's the student's last name? What's the student's first name? And what school do you plan on picking up the meal? Even though your student is a student at Hardin County High School, you could pick those meals up at Paris South or West Hardin or Pickwick Southside if you choose to do so. So if you're turning in, if you've got a student here and a student at Pickwick Southside, both doing distance learning, and you want to pick up both students' meals at the same time, you can pick them both up out at Pickwick Southside. But you need to register and fill that form out every week. It needs to be completed by Wednesday of each week. With the meal distribution, the pickup will be at all schools from 10 to 11 a.m. If you're picking up food here at Hardin County High School, the pickup will be out behind the cafeteria, between the cafeteria and the field house out there in that area, right outside of the cafeteria. And students do not have to be present to pick up these meals as long as the parent has the student's names and picks up at the school that you said you were going to pick up, pick up at on the form when you registered for those meals. And those meals will be sent home a week at a time. So if you, pick, if you register by tomorrow and you pick up meals on Monday, that's going to be breakfasts and lunches for five days, from Monday through Friday. Mr. Wilkerson has gone through the portions of the handbook that you needed to go through, the information that you're required to hear. But we're, you're going to get a handbook before you leave tonight. And you're responsible for knowing that information. If you decide to come back to school in January, you're responsible for knowing what that dress code is. It's in there. Most of you already know it. You've heard it time and time again. You're expected to know the weapons policies. They're in there. All, they, all those things apply if you come back to a traditional schedule. They also apply anytime you set foot on our school campus, whether it's attending a club meeting after school, whether it's coming to a football game on Friday night. You come out here to the football game on Friday night and get in a, a fight, you're still going to have to come into the office and go through disciplinary action because you're still a student at HCHS. 
You are still expected to abide by the rules that every student at Hart County High School abides by. Now, Google Classroom, all of our teachers are going to be using Google Classroom, especially ones that have distance learners, which are you guys. Your teachers will be posting information in Google Classroom weekly and even daily with instruction. There's going to be videos of them teaching, maybe videos of somebody else teaching a lesson that they found on YouTube or something. There's going to be lessons, there's going to be assignments, there's going to be quizzes, there's going to be tests. This is not stay at home and get a free ride. You are responsible for turning every single assignment back in. When you don't turn an assignment in, it's a zero, just like you didn't turn in a homework assignment, or just like you didn't make up a quiz, or just like you didn't make up a test if you were here at school every day. Each teacher's been asked to kind of provide you with a weekly overview kind of on Monday of every week saying, here's what we're going to get this week. Monday we're going to go over this section. Tuesday we're going to do this. Wednesday we're going to do that. Thursday we're going to do this. Friday we're going to do that. And we're going to take a quiz on Wednesday. It's due about 3 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon. You've got a test coming up next week. Make sure we're preparing for that. We're going to be reviewing here, there, whatever. They're going to try to provide you a weekly overview so you, you'll know up front what to expect with this week's work. Now each teacher's classroom setup will be a little bit different. All right, Some of them are going to post lessons every day. Some of them are going to come in on Monday and post all their lessons for the entire week. You can work ahead, whatever, whatever their timelines and due dates and all that stuff are you are responsible for abiding by. But you've got to be checking this stuff daily and regularly to make sure you're staying up to date. Something didn't slip in there that you didn't know about. Every assignment has due dates and times that each assignment will be due. And it's your responsibility to meet these deadlines. Some tests and quizzes, teachers, have, we've, we have finally cracked the code on some of it and how to put a timer on some of them. You know, if kids in their classroom are getting 15 minutes to take this quiz, it's not fair if you're sitting at home and having a whole hour to take that quiz. Some of these tests and quizzes teachers have put timers on. They'll tell you beforehand, we're taking this quiz, you're going to have 15 minutes, and when you open it up, there's a clock that starts counting down that's going to kick you out after 15 minutes. Those types of things. So don't think you're going to get to sit at home and cheat on everything or, or any of those types of things. We're trying to take different measures for different security measures on different quizzes and tests and those type of things as well. Each of you was given a sheet as you came in tonight. It has login information for Google accounts. A Google account gives you access to Google Classroom, Google Drive, Google Slides, Google Docs, Google Sheets, all these wonderful things that teachers are going to ask you to use to create things to submit back to them as assignments. It also contains information for Clever. Those of you who've been around, Clever is the website we use when we log in to take all those case benchmark tests. If you're in an end of course tested subject area, you're still going to have to log into Clever and take those tests even if it's at home. And if you don't have a device at home, if you're one of these packet learners, we'll have to contact you to come into school and take that test. It also contains information for Synergy Student View. Most of you remember last year we, we rolled out Parent View. It's the, apps of your, the app that parents were able to put, you were able to put on your phone, had a password and stuff, you could check your kids' grades and different things communicate with teachers. All right, there's a student version of that. So students, you've got this information. You can download the student view app or you can go to their website and you can still check on this. Most of the things you're gonna be able to do through student view are things you're gonna be able to see your grades and everything through Google Classroom as well. 
but you should have been provided login information. It should be something similar to your first name dot last name at hctnschools.com. Now, some of you have the same name as one of these freshmen or sophomores or something like that. So there may be numbers attached to yours or a middle initial or something like that. But it's got what your email address is. Now, that is not an email address that is open for you to put down to receive email from other people. It's not an email address where you're checking email. That's an account name that you're using to log into Google, log into Clever, and log into Student View. Your password should, should be your lunch number twice. So if my lunch number is 2569. My password is 2569-2569. We don't expect you to remember what your lunch number from last year was. A lot of you do. When we hand out schedules here after a while, your little lunch card is attached. It's got your lunch number on it, okay? So, make sure you pay attention and don't lose that lunch number. Now, to log in to Google Classroom. Some of you have used it with some of your teachers in the past, but not everybody has. The easiest way to tell you, I'm gonna show a quick video here in just a few minutes. And then I've got Mr. Rickman wants to talk to some of you. But go to google.com. And in the top right hand corner, you can click sign in. So you, and you can put in that school email address as your username, put in your password, then click on the video is going to call it a waffle. It's little like eight or nine little dots a little square of dots up in the top right hand corner and find the icon that says classroom, Google Classroom. And when you do that, it's gonna take you to Google Classroom. Teachers should have you already there. You should already be enrolled in these classes. This video is gonna talk about joining using a class code. You're not gonna to have to have that class code. When you log in, you should see your four classes. Everybody's got a first, second, third, and fourth period class. Unless it's a study hall, you should see four different tiles that says Miss Crothers Algebra II Honors class or whatever she titled that class. Okay? Or whoever you've got for whatever subject. You're going to see your four classes. And when you click on that class, there's going to be, well, this video is going to show you the different things. There's a stream, which is basically kind of an area to post if you've got a question for somebody, it's a communication tool. Teachers will post something on that stream. It's basically for class announcements. There's a part at the top that says classwork. If you remember nothing else, when you get into a classroom, if you click classwork, it's going to take you to where the assignments and instruction and everything is. And then there's another one, I think, where maybe you can see your grades, a kind of a grade book view of what, what grades that the teacher has taken. But there's lots of different things that Google Classroom can be used for. Now, I'm gonna show you this quick, it's about a four minute video. And again, this is not designed to show you everything Google Classroom can do. This is just a quick introduction. And I'm gonna tell everybody something that I've learned this summer. If there's something you want to learn how to do in Google Classroom, if you, want to, if you can't figure out how to turn in an assignment, if you go to YouTube and search how to turn in an assignment in Google Classroom, there's gonna be about 20 videos that pop up showing you, how, showing you how to turn in an assignment in Google Classroom, or how to use Google Docs, or how to use Google Slides, or something like that. If a teacher tells you something, Google it, or go to YouTube and search it, and you're gonna find a video that's gonna show you how to do it, more than likely. So we're going to pause, I'm going to let you watch this quick video. Hello, thanks for watching. This demo we're going to show students and parents how to effectively use Google Classroom. To get started, you want to go to google.com and click sign in. Sign in with your email address from your school and then enter in your password. After you sign in, Click on the squares at the top, I call this the waffle. Click on the waffle and then look for the Google Classroom icon. If you don't see it here at the top, you might have to scroll all the way down this window to find it. 
But what you're looking for is this icon here with the green square with the yellow, uh, yellow outline. Click on that, and that brings you to your Google Classroom homepage. Now there's two ways that you can be added to a classroom. One, the teacher can invite you. When they invite you, it'll look like this, where it'll give you the classroom name, picture of the teacher, with a button to either join or decline. The second option is your teacher could give you a code to enter. So to use the code, you click the plus symbol at the top to join the class. Enter the code and click join. First thing I'm going to show is click on the three bars at the top. That will show you all the classes that you are in. So you can toggle back and forth between your classes. The other thing I want to show you here is the to-do list. This is great because it shows you an overview of all the classes you have. So at the top it shows the things that are missing, the thing that's overdue. Then it shows you the things that are coming up in the order that they're due. This is a great planning tool, a great time management tool. Something to let you know what's coming up in the next couple days, next couple weeks. From the classroom, there's three main areas. There's the stream, which is like a Facebook stream or a Twitter stream, and it shows you all of the activity that's happening in the classroom. It shows you any assignments that have been posted, shows you any questions that have been posted. The classroom tab shows all of the classwork that has been assigned, uh, either has been done or, is, or needs to be done. Now, there could be a lot of information here as the year goes on. If you click on the View Your Work link here at the top, that link gives you a quick overview of the assignments that you have either assigned to you that's missing or, or, or still due. You can also see any assignments that have already been completed. If you click on the name, it expands the assignment. You can click View Details to see more. From here, you can see the description of the assignment. You can see any attachments that come with it. In this case, it's a YouTube video. In the upper right corner, under Your Work, you can add or create new documents to go with this assignment. Click on Add, click on Doc, it will create the document for you and associate it with this assignment. From this Google Doc, you can enter whatever information you need. And when you're done, you can click on Turn In. That'll bring you back to Google Classroom and allow you to turn this project in. That's how you add a document and then submit it. Let's say you weren't quite done with it or the teacher gave you some feedback and said you need to put more information into it. You could unsubmit the document, edit the form, edit the Google document, and then return it back in. This turn it button may or may not be visible in the Google document. It will always be available over here for you to turn it back in. And you can return to your English class. You can go to your classwork, click on your work, and here you can see that this document has been turned in. You're still missing your reading log and have two other assignments coming up, but at least you have a good overview of what you have to do. Another powerful feature from Google Classroom is the calendar feature. Click on the three bars at the top and select calendar. This will show you a week-by-week -week calendar of your assignments that are coming up. You click on the right arrow button to move to the next week, and then week-by-week week you can see what you have coming up. You can, from this drop-down, select which class you want to look at, so you can filter down just to see specific classes or all of them. Uh, just a really handy way to create time management skills, learn to see what's coming up so you're not surprised by a massive essay that's due. That's it. That's a quick overview for Google Classroom for students. Thanks for watching. Let me know if I can help. All right. Again, you will not have to join those classes with special code the way that video showed. Your classes should already be set up for you. We sent directions to teachers this week to connect their classrooms that within Synergy, which is our information system, to connect it with Google Classroom so that all of their students are automatically loaded into those classes. So they're already going to be set up for you when you log in. Now, my recommendation for you guys is, yes, distance learning, not supposed to start till the 17th. But go home tonight or tomorrow, log in to Google Classroom. If you're having trouble logging in, you need to contact the school before the first date when you're supposed to start turning in assignments and that type of stuff. You need to log in. Make sure you can log in. Start familiarizing yourself with those classrooms. All right? Some teachers have already posted things in there, such as like things that you need for, your, for their class. 
if you need graph paper for your math class, if you need a certain type of calculator, if you need this or if you need that. There's information already posted in. Some of them have already told me, I went ahead and posted this so they can look at it. If they need to go ahead and be buying something, they can go, go to Walmart and buy it or whatever. Okay? Go ahead and log in. Make sure you can log in. If you can't log in, you need to contact the school and we will try to step you through. We'll try to figure out what's going on and why it's not allowing you to log in. Now, again, I, I said that some teachers are already posting materials. Also know this. If you're not going to start your distance, distance learning to August 17th, some of you are in classes and we're asking a lot of our teachers this year. We're asking them to teach some class, say a class of 25, where 18 kids are sitting in front of them and seven of them are you guys who are at home. And out of those seven who are at home, five of them have computers and are doing Google Classroom, and two of them were having to put a week's work together and of packets and, and that type of stuff together. So be patient with these teachers. But no, they're starting classes with those kids who are sitting in front of them next week. And you're basically a week behind those kids. And they're going to be asking a lot of you those first two or three weeks to get you caught up and on the same schedule with those kids because they're still responsible for teaching you the same material by the end of this semester when it comes time to take an end of course test or by the end of this semester when it comes time to take a final exam. So you're probably looking at doing some extra work that first week or so to get caught up and on the same pacing guide that everybody else sitting in front of them are in. You've chosen probably the harder path. I don't know how I would be sitting at home taking Algebra 2 without a teacher to help me. You're going to have to rely heavily on these videos. It's going to be tough. But you're still responsible for getting these assignments done, getting them turned in, contacting the teacher when you've got questions or when you've got problems. Okay? The other thing that I did not put in this PowerPoint before I let Mr. Rickman come and talk Mr. Rickman is handling, most, most of you guys have, are in one of his English 11 or English 11 honors classes, okay? And he wants to come talk to you about some of the expectations that he has for you if you've got in, one, in an English 11 class. But if you, when you get your schedule and stuff up here in, a, in just a little bit, when we start distributing these materials out, a lot of teachers have already left textbooks for you to go ahead and take home with you tonight. If you're in a course that has end of course testing, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry, English 9, English 10, U.S. History, or Biology, you're still going to have to take an end of course test in that subject. Meaning, when it comes December, and we're taking in the course test, we're going to have to schedule times for you to set foot back on this campus and come take those in the course tests. Know that, expect that, plan around that. The dates for in the course testing start the week where we come back after Thanksgiving break and go all the way up to our, uh, till we get out for Christmas. So know that and expect that. Now, again, if you're in the year-long Algebra two classes, they won't test till the spring. But if you're in Algebra two honors this semester, you'll have an end of course test at Christmas. If you're in an English 11, well, English 11 and English 12 don't have end of course test anymore. But Algebra two honors does, US history does. So expect, if you got start getting phone calls from me trying to schedule times for end of course testing, that's what it's about. And you have to take those. That counts as your final exam for those courses. All right. Uh, after Mr. Rickman speaks, I'm going to turn it over to him. Um, it'll be another slow process of trying to hand out these materials, but I'm going to let Mr. Rickman go ahead and speak to his expectations. We've asked these teachers. Several of them are here tonight. He's the only one that really wished, wanted to speak to you. The rest of them are kind of shy. But this is Mr. David Rickman. 
Hey, how you guys doing? My night has gotten much better. Todd, there you are. I, I have to just thank y'all so much. I know you miss me as well. Mr. Mr. Yeah. He's video. You video me, okay. And the, I had two things I was going to talk with you tonight. The first was the Jackson State classes. How many of you are taking the dual enrollment classes? Just a show of hands, a few of those that are. Okay, uh, if you are, if you're a senior, if you've already had the dual enrollment classes, first thing I would tell you to do, the classes aren't started until the 24th of August. Check and see if you can still log in to your Jackson State. Probably when you try to log into eLearn, if you know what that is from the previous class, it's gonna tell you to change the password. So you're gonna have to go in, get your password changed, see if you can still log into that. If you forgot what your email address was and had to do with Jackson State, call Jackson State and get that set up. The 11th graders that are taking dual, they're taking US history with me, those, class, those as well, go ahead and before the 24th, something I want you to do. On Thursday, David Clark is gonna be here from Jackson State to help you get registered, get signed in, kind of get settled in with that if you um, are not already. But the main thing I want you to do before that, get your email, get the password, get that set up. Because everything with the Jackson State classes, the dual US, English comp, and those classes like that, those are going to be running through eLearn and not Google Classroom. There's several reasons for that. It's mainly it's the system through Jackson State. Ms. Plunks uh, will probably be running through Google Classroom. Though. No, it's going through that as well, too. Reasons for that vary a lot of them, uh, but for mainly on my end is because of Zoom and the contracts we have through that. Other than that, the thing I can tell you with the Jackson State classes, those are going to be done through Zoom. None of them are going to be the English comp, U.S., some of those the kids would be taking, those are to be handled through Zoom classes. None of those, the Jackson State classes are me. My night classes are doing the same thing as well, too. So if you're in my classes when we're doing that, I'll go over with you how attendance is done and the expectations, expectations of that when we get uh, to that point. But again, if you have any questions that go with the dual enrollment Jackson State stuff, what well, good person to get in touch with is name's David Clark from Jackson State, dclark at jscc.edu. His, um, it's his email address and get in touch with him guidance counselors here can do that as well too and as far as the classes that run through Google Classroom the best thing that you can do with that is once you get logged in just go in look around in it because it's not a difficult system to use um, getting in touch with teachers is very easy one of the things that you will be able to do because each of us has these dedicated time, time periods where we are just working with your classes you have a chance to do a lot of very individualized time with us. Uh, we have time roped off each day. We can get with you, we can talk to you, we can send emails. There's gonna be a good chance for you to get a lot of feedback. And you're gonna need that. You're probably gonna need that in Algebra 2, more so than probably any other class, because good night, there's a lot of Algebra 2 books there. Everybody's getting one. I'm going home and doing Algebra 2. That's what I'm gonna be doing in the pool. Quadratic equations, I guess. It's so busy putting those together, too. It is. It's gotten harder. It must have. I work for me. But anyway, and just in general with distance classes, I have I've taught distance classes uh, college level for a decade, and I've got one going right now. And I can tell you, the kids that are successful are the kids that create some kind of structure in their lives. You're going to do work at different hours of the day because that's just the facts of it. Someone over here, someone over here. You guys are going to have different times to work. But what you need is you need to create a routine. The structure of school is now removed. What you guys have to do is you have to create that structure. It's on parents, but that's just at this age. It's on, it's on us as students and it's on us as teachers to help create that. And the other thing that I would add, there's a, a lot of talk about the accountability that you as a student have toward getting work done. The same goes for us as teachers. There's a lot of accountability for us to provide you with a content, with instruction, with materials that are on par with what is taking place in the school. And I encourage parents to make sure that you are looking through some of this work, see that it meets the expectations that you have for your students. And you need to hold teachers accountable for that as well, too. And do try to stay in touch with us. If you got any questions, we've got emails, call up here. We'll be more than happy to help you. And I think it's about time to start passing out Algebra 2 books. We have about 50. Here's Ms. Plunk as well. <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay. Um, due to the fact that I've taught several online classes, let me give you some hints, folks, that are doing your own line. 
find you a blank calendar and you take and make it by class if you need to and highlight those colors for classes and you take that calendar and you mark your assignments down when they're due on that calendar so that you can look at that calendar at the beginning of every day and know I've got something due tomorrow or whenever. If you do not stay organized and keep your thoughts, you've got four different classes going at one time. Some of you may have more. But my thing is this, I have found that online students who are successful, they take a calendar, they leave it blank, and they go back in and they fill in all their algebra one with blue. So they know this assignment in blue on this date is due. English and red. Go back through, put your calendar down, English and red, what your due dates are. And it may not be but by week. The college algebra, if you're taking um, online college algebra through Jackson State, you will pretty much get a calendar from me and you will see the due dates. You will need to take that and put it into your online calendar, okay, because those due dates do not change. There are Jackson State's due dates and Jackson State is totally online this semester. Um, if you are taking a Jackson State college algebra through me, you will have to be here we will make arrangements for you to come at a lot of time. It may be by yourself and take your proctored midterm and proctored final. But those are the only two times you have to come to campus or you need to make arrangements with me through phone. There is a possibility of doing a proctor online. Um, I'm still working on that to how that gets set up, but it may be easier just to come and instead of set it up online, it may just become one day by me and you at three o'clock and you take, you have two hours to take the final and you have two hours to take the midterm and we make those days. Um, but I do think Jackson State is offering an online proctoring service um, if you're taking that college algebra class. But everything on that college algebra class is online, but I am here and I'm here to help you if you need the help. My number and name will be at the top of the e-learn when you log in so that you'll know how to access me. But I strongly urge you, if you are doing online, that you find some structure in your day and you designate those times for English. You designate that time for math. You designate that time for Spanish. Whatever the case is. But you have that calendar land where you can see it that you know I've got an assignment due. I may only post my Google Classroom once a week. I may post the lessons by the day just sit so you can see the video. But if you know there's something due, write it on the calendar so that you can see it. And keep that calendar handy where you can keep organized. If you can't keep organized, it's going to overload you all at one time. If you stay organized, I think you'll be successful. All right. Mr. Spencer Geralds, he is, uh, has been recently hired. He is our uh, career coordinator, and he is uh, here. He is invested in every uh, senior success, so he's got a few things that he wants to talk to you about, Mr. Spencer Geralds. Thank you. So I'll be dealing with you guys a lot, seniors specifically, and senior parents, with uh, FAFSA, Tennessee Promise, um, things of that nature with scholarships. Uh, right now what I want to talk to you about is the blue form that all you seniors got. That is for the Tennessee Promise. So the Tennessee Promise is a scholarship you get basically just for graduating in the state of Tennessee and being accepted into a uh, two-year or TCAT school. So we really, really want everybody to fill that out because um, it's not financial based, it's not academic based, it's I'm going to Jackson State or I'm going to Crump and that's money you get just for registering. So, when you turn those blue forms back in, please, please, please make sure that the email that you put in there is a working email, one you can actually check. Um, I'm going to shoulder some of the burden for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and register every one of these blue forms I have on the Tennessee Promise, and then I will send you an email with your username, with your password, but this is all gonna be hard to do if it's not an email that you don't have access to. So please, when you put that down, make sure that it is an active email um, that you can check. So we want to make sure that all you guys have your Tennessee Promise money. And some of you may be saying, well, I'm not going to be going to a two-year college or a technical school. Um, and the Promise, actually, it does work at some four-year schools with an associate's program. That's something you have to look into. 
But we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. Because if you decide at a later date, it's a good safety net. If we get past the deadline and we don't fill it out, that's just free money that you could have gotten for college. Who knows, maybe you find a program in a couple years that you want to try at Jackson State. And you're not going to be able to get that if you don't fill that out. So it's really important that you guys turn that in, accurate information. The things in the top left-hand corner that say office use only, you don't have to do anything with that. But the rest of it, I'm going to go ahead and register um, all the seniors that I get tonight for the Tennessee Promise. Be checking your email because I'll send you your confirmation. If you guys have any questions about um, FAFSA, Tennessee Promise, um, anything that you find that's a state scholarship in general, please reach out to me. Like, a, um, like I was saying, I'm, I'm in addition to um, FAFSA director, I'm also going to be working with um, our career coordinating the WAP program. So if you guys are interested also in finding a job, um, we have several community sponsors who would love to have some of our high school students work for them. So please reach out to me at any time and I'll do whatever I can to help you guys out. We are uh, recording this meeting in case this was an information overload. Uh, we're recording it so that you can go back and watch it. You may think that you never want to see that recording again and I understand. Uh, as I said earlier, the, the distance learned is a work in progress. Our distance learning meetings are a work in progress. We are trying to get organized so that we can get you guys out of here. There are three more things that I need to read that are really quick, that are, that are very important. Uh, and then when I finish getting reading those, we're, we're going to stop the, the live stream. Then we're going to come up here and uh, start passing out materials. Again, thank you for showing up. Uh, it shows me that you know you care about your child's education as much as we do. We, we have several books up here that we may have two different stacks for your child, so we're going to go through those when it's over. But I'm going to get these read so that Mr. Uh, Mr. Builder can stop filming and get this thing edited and, and uh, loaded up on to our uh, social media. Underclassmen pictures. If you are a junior. We want you to be in the yearbook. You are still a Hardin County High School student. So your pictures will be on Thursday, August 20. Any student who wants a picture between 1 and 2.45, the photographers will be here and be set up. We ask that you come in the main entrance, just the student, and we will get you to get a picture, and then we'll get you back out. So that's for juniors, on August 20th from 1 to 2.45. Any senior that has not scheduled a senior picture, you should do so as soon as possible. You should have received an info card. If you have not, they are set up here tomorrow, Thursday, and half a day on Friday in the, audit, I mean in the auxiliary gym. You can park down by the tennis court, seniors, and then come in, have your picture made, and then leave. Um, so if you can, schedule an appointment time. Um, so if you have not received, you can't schedule an appointment time, call up here at the school, ask for Miss Amy Atkinson. They will direct the message to her, and then she will set you up an appointment. All right? And at any time, if any of this is overwhelming, you don't think you know what you need to know, your, your student is struggling, reach out to the teacher, reach out to Ms. Carol Miller, reach out to me. I'm going to go ahead and give you my email address. I'm going to give you my phone number and extension. Call me at any time. I'm more than willing to work with you as long as I know that there's something that you're struggling with. Students or parents, my Email address is wes.wilkerson at hctnschools, with an S, dot com. You can shoot me an email. Hey, we're, we're having trouble logging on. Can you send us a packet home? Absolutely. I just need to know who's going to pick it up. When can you come get it? Uh, my, the number here at the school is, is 925-3976. My extension is 6011. I don't call myself. Uh, 
but we just got a new phone extensions and all the extension numbers changed. Uh, but my extension is 6011 and that'll put you straight through to me. So if you're having any problems there, just let us know.